There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. You can change your hair, your clothing, your address, your residence. But if you don't change your mind, the same experience will perpetuate itself over and over again because everything outwardly changed, but nothing inwardly changed. You know, nothing happens unless you change. So change is not our enemy, it's our friend. There's a season that you may go through a difficult period, but that is to wake up your ability to change. You cannot become what you were born to be unless you are not willing to change into something you are not. This is why change is so important. Uh, I like what it says here, uh, Shakespeare says, sweet are the uses of adversity. We never grow in good times. We never advance unless we are under pressure. Change comes to improve and to advance your life, not to destroy you. I think that we often forget this. If we're going to face hardships, we can't avoid pain, we can't avoid trouble. All we can do is prepare our mindset so that we don't get overwhelmed by our circumstances. A lot of people, when they have a negative circumstance take place in their life, um, they react negatively to it. And that seems almost natural. In fact, that is natural. Something negative happens to me, my reaction back to it is negative. But this is why you have to change your mindset. I've seen people who had the education to go up, they had the gifting to go up, they had the talent to go up, didn't have the right attitude. And eventually, if that attitude, if that heart, if that invisible part isn't right, you can have all the talent in the world, but you will always end up getting spoiled by your own attitude. Yes, you'll get the opportunity. Yes, you'll get the job. Yes, you'll get the deal, but you won't be able to keep it because your attitude will corrupt every opportunity that life offers you. Never saw it coming. Life isn't what happens to you when you're looking. What happens to you when you're looking is called the plan. Life is what happens to you when you're not looking, when your guard is down, when your back is turned. It's going to work on a Friday morning feeling good and having your boss call you in. And you know she has a look on her face and you know that look isn't good. You know the economy isn't so hard and we've got to let you go. And all you can think about are those three kids you have now. You know life is coming home from work and finding that note on the kitchen table saying, Hey, I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. I love you, but I've got to go. And you're frustrated and you're betrayed and you're furious and you're angry. But all you want to do, all you want to do is hold them again. All you want to do is hear those words whispered in your ear. I love you again. No, that's life. How do I know that? How do you deal with that, those sort of situations? You see, it's been said a hundred times, and I'll say it again, you've got to go through it. That's all it is, you've got to go through it. And going through it is not a function of just being courageous. It's not a function of just saying, well, I'm going to close my eyes and see what happens next. It's not that. It's really a function of three things. It's a beginning, it's a middle, and an end. And before you go through it, there's a choice. You make a choice to say, well, I'm either going to stay here, or I'm going to be over there someday, somehow. It's a choice. So going through it and thinking about these three steps, beginning, middle, and end, you know, you can really save yourself a lot of trouble and you can discover something more about yourself. It's called life and it's not personal. Stuff's going to happen. And if you make it to the 40-yard line, if you can make it to age 40, between 40 and 60, it begins to intensify. All kind of things happen. Between 40 and 60. My mother was diagnosed with breast cancer and finally died. Between 40 and 60, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Between 40 and 60, I went through a divorce from someone that I love very much. Between 40 and 60, had a nationally syndicated talk show, highest rated fastest cancer talk show in the history of television. Between 40 and 60, oh, life put a whooping on me. It ain't personal. It's called life. You know, I was just homeless, man. I mean, you know, you're in a position where you're going, I got nowhere to go except up. I might as well keep hustling. I was in comedy. I just wasn't making nothing. All the money I was making, I was sending back home to my wife and kids. That didn't last long. She got tired of that real fast. But I couldn't go back to Cleveland because I wouldn't have enough money to drive back down south to perform. 
One time I drove to the house in Cleveland. I finally got enough money. I drove to the house in Cleveland. Everybody was gone. I didn't see my kids for almost two years. They just left, boarded up the house. So next thing you know, I'm in the car. I lived there, but it taught me, it taught me determination, man. I'm a really, really determined person. It also taught me that no matter what happens to you, it ain't over. I was determined to be something. As long as God wakes you up, that means he ain't through with you yet. There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. The only way off of welfare is to change your default settings. The only way to get a good education is to change your default settings. As long as you're programmed with what you can't do and what you can't be and what you can't have, you will never get up. But I dare you to go into your phone booth like Clark Kent and spin around and come out Superman and say, wait a minute, I'm better than this. I'm getting ready to change my default setting. I will not let you abuse me. I will not stay. There is nothing as powerful as a changed mind. So, the first thing you have to think about when you're going through something is very simple. It's, I'm not where I want to be, but I know I can get there. I have faith that I'm going to get where I want to be. So we have hope that the grieving process read, except that say yes to that. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work. They're scared of losing their job. The dollar buys the people's good. You know, the air is unfit to breathe. Our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes. As if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad. Worse than bad. I want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to run to your congressman. I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression. These places are crying in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value.